Welcome to our weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield News anchor and reporter Megan Grebner. With us is Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. All right. Last week we talked the day before the Hogs and Pigs report came out, and we knew what the projections were, but we saw the actual report on Friday. Let's talk about those numbers and what that means for the rest of 2016 as we look at it from today. Yes, certainly some interesting information we got out of hogs and pigs last week. Uh, you know, number one, a, a breeding inventory that was basically flat relative to a year ago. Uh, I, I think in many ways that uh, is, is helpful to us as we think about the remainder of 2016. We certainly didn't want a surprise in terms of additional sows uh, in, in the herd right now, and we didn't get that out of the report. Uh, I will say when we look at the by weight categories, uh, certainly some of the heavier weights, we had a, a modest increase in uh, those inventories uh, relative to a year ago, just suggesting that hog slaughter uh, certainly could be on the rise a little bit relative to a year ago. Don't want to overstate that. Um, I, I guess some of the, the tougher issues to think through from that hogs and pigs report is, first of all, we did get another revision in the pig crop uh, out of the report, and, and that's the third quarter in a row that we've seen USDA provide us uh, some revisions upward in terms of, of pig crop. Uh, I, I continue to say if those kinds of revisions uh, stay with us as we move forward in 2016, uh, that certainly could, could spell some trouble as we get in the, the very uh, latter stages of 2016. Uh, some of the good news, I guess, as well, you know, when you look at, at South Farrowed, uh, at least expectations for June through August, USDA reports, reports that at 97% uh, of a year ago. Uh, I, I wonder if there isn't some con confusing, confounding information between what's happening in terms of sows farrowed and, and the pig crop revisions that we've been getting. We'll have to wait and see. I, I certainly uh, advise folks to be careful about reading too much into that 3% down in terms of uh, expected sows farrowed so far. Uh, the, the last piece I think that's worthy talking about just for a second, uh, pigs per litter. So, uh, USDA gave us 10.3 uh, pigs per litter uh, December through February of, of uh, uh, this last report. Uh, that, that was frankly uh, up only marginally relative to a year ago and, and down relative to the previous quarter. Uh, uh, again, that might give us a, a, a little less growth than we might have anticipated, but uh, uh, we'll continue to, to watch and, and I will continue to say be, be cautious as we get in that last quarter of 2016. Nothing in the report made me uh, more nervous, but I still worry that uh, we've got a large run of hogs coming towards the end of the year. And so we're still really waiting and needing those those uh, plants coming online in 2017 to really meet the mark for, for the pork industry? Yeah, ab absolutely, Megan. And, and, and I say it's just so critical because you just have a few extra hogs trying to hang on the rail in the, in the last quarter of 2016, and it can create a real... Uh, uh, price situation that we don't want to have to face. So whether we have a problem or don't have a problem, it's such a binary uh, decision that's going to come here. We, we just have to really be concerned. And, and again, you're right, getting into 2017 and, and looking at uh, additional hogs probably coming, it's good to get these new plants coming on board to make sure we have that capacity that we're going to need. Let's talk a little bit. Um, we typically talk about livestock, and we'll talk a little bit beef numbers and, and some other things as, as we move ahead. But plantings, the prospective plantings report came out this week and uh, looks like a good sign for livestock producers, maybe uh, a little bit more concerning for, for those corn and, and soybean farmers uh, on that side of things. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think you might have heard the uh, collective livestock industry take a deep uh, breath given the report yesterday. Uh, we did see corn futures uh, that have been off 15 cents or so. I sometimes say... You know, all of a sudden that added 75 cents per hundred to the bottom line of a hog producer. Uh, th that's pretty good news in what's a much tighter margin situation than we've seen for a while. Uh, I will say for cow-cow producers, you know, we got a nice uh, increase in Oklahoma City feeder steer uh, prices and, and feeder cattle prices at, at uh, the exchange as well. So uh, the, the 93.6 that we planted uh, or intend to plant uh, is was certainly a surprise to the market and, and moved corn prices lower. I, I think there's a couple things here. You know, we talk a lot about volatility in, in agriculture today, and I'm going to remind livestock producers that the fact that 
Uh, we've talked about 93.6 million acres of corn being planted uh, with what's already a 1.8 billion bushel lending corn stocks out of USDA's last WASDE report tells me those ending stocks are only going to grow. So even with a weather situation uh, in, in 2016, we've got a much better buffer from an ending stock perspective than we've had for several years. So perhaps this extreme volatility we've seen in feed prices uh, will be a little more muted as we go ahead. So uh, it, it's good news in what's uh, uh, lower livestock prices relative to what we saw in 2014. And I will say really good news when you think about we're going to be pushing a lot of meat supplies to domestic consumers uh, here in the next uh, uh, several months, and, and we need all the break we can get on the cost side. Does that also help to keep um, cost of production, like feed costs, for example, at near what the lowest they've been in, in quite a few years, right? Right, Megan, I think you have to get back into to 2009, 2010 to talk about feed prices that are lower. Uh, than than where we are right now, um, and, and I think it's it's a surprise to many. You know, I, I often talk about the fact that uh, when we had record high corn prices, you couldn't hear many people who would ever say, "Well, you know, corn prices can't fall below," and and I'd say, "Fill in your number," and many folks will say four dollars because that's break even. Uh, but but we're certainly gonna already move below four dollars uh, considerably, and and could continue to see some pressure now. We'll have to wait until we get a June acreage report and see what kind of, of weather we really have this year. But uh, from a feed cost perspective, uh, what it might make what otherwise was a, a red ink year uh, a, a little bit of black ink for some of uh, the cattle and hog folks that are out there. So good news uh, out of that report if you're a livestock producer and need to buy feed. Scott, you brought up demand, and it's something that we talk about on a regular basis. Um, but another, and, and I guess we'll end on a positive note for, for the week, uh, another good figure coming this week for the, uh, the demand sector. That's right. You know, we get a monthly report from the uh, National Restaurant Association, the Restaurant Performance Index, and, and they reported for February up a little more than 2%. And, and yes, there's some leapier issues in that uh, February number, but all in all, I'll say positive, especially when we ended 2015 on kind of a sour note where we had a little bit of contraction in that restaurant performance index. Um, I look at it and I go, both current situation and expectations uh, pulled that February index higher. And, and for me, that's really good news. Uh, and, and we need to continue to see that demand side as, as strong as possible because we continue to talk about we're going to uh, increase the supply of beef, the supply of pork that we're bringing to the market. You know, I, I for a minute go, you know, remember we're, we're roughly uh, running the same level of slaughter of, of hogs as we did a year ago to this point in 2016. Uh, a, a few more cattle actually uh, to this point in 2016 relative to 15. Pushing those additional uh, meat supplies probably more towards domestic consumers and not towards export markets means we need strong demand to keep those prices higher. Uh, I sometimes look and I go belly uh, belly prices on the pork side have been very nice in, in providing some support to that wholesale cutout value, but we're going to need all portions of that uh, cutout value, whether it's beef or pork, uh, to continue to remain as strong as possible given the, the supply we're going to push. And I've got to say, as you look, as I go shopping, as I go grocery shopping and I see the price for... Uh, the feature price for, for beef and some of those really nice cuts of, of meat are really reasonable. Is that going to help us drive uh, domestic demand and consumer interest in, in beef as well? Absolutely. I think when you look at the beef side in particular, uh, we're seeing some better prices than we would have year, a year ago. And I think that's helping us uh, from a retail perspective, finding retailers interested in pushing some of those beef products where perhaps the, the margin's a little better for them than it was a year ago, where we might have uh, seen retailers backing away from beef and featuring some other meats. I think that's turning around as we get a few more uh, beef supplies out on the market and as well some lower prices. It just gives retailers a little more uh, cushion, if you will, to, to look at some product mix that uh, they wouldn't have a year ago. So we, we are going to see lower prices, I think, at the meat case as we move ahead. And, and from my standpoint, we need demand as strong as possible to, to move that additional consumption that's going to be coming. Well, warm weather, grilling season is upon us, and, and hopefully that helps us a little bit more there as well. Absolutely. Let's hope this demand just hangs with us uh, as we go through 2016. 
Scott, anything else from this week, uh, news and notes maybe to point out? I think that covers a, a, a lot of what we've seen uh, happening in markets. Again, I, I think it's a fine balancing act that we have going on where we're pushing a lot more supplies of beef and pork uh, in, in the market in 2016, and we really need domestic demand to hang with us. Scott, have a great week. We'll talk to you next Friday. Thanks very much, Megan. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.